Hello once again. I'm your host, Doc Rodden, and this is Horror News Radio, the official gruesome magazine podcast. Back with me again this week are the scariest, goriest, bloodiest co-host on the net, and we are here to review Censor. Yes, we are. And joining me tonight is <laughs> the one and only Jay Dreyer. Oh. Uh, I thought this was censure. I thought it was a. I thought it was a Trump <laughs> documentary. I was all confused. Uh, I didn't know what the hell was going on. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I bet you were surprised then. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, politics of one hundred and one. All right. Also joining us, award-winning filmmaker Christopher G. Moore. Bleep 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 bleep. Yeah, I'm doing good. But <laughs> <laughs> I'd censor myself before I say anything bad. Oh, nice. no, I'm, I'm doing wonderful. Wunderbar, I'm, I'm interested right. to see hear what Dave thinks about a film that uses colored lights in the in the film. Something I really not express much of an opinion on, so I'm I'm anxious to share that with him. Yes. Mm. Your, your your Mandy thoughts. Mandy thoughts. <laughs> All right. Also joining us, podcast rock star and international cosplay queen Vanessa. How you doing? Nice. Doing good. Don't censor yeah. me, Doc. That's all Don't I gotta say. You. you got your censor glasses on. Mm-hmm. You're all official. Maybe I'll censor you. Yeah, you got your, like, your librarian mm-hmm. kind of look going I'm used there. to yeah. being judged by women, so you don't scare me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. This is going places I did not. <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about a horror movie. It's getting deep, folks. All right. Uh, what we're going to do. <laughs> my is... love life is a horror film. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Oh my god. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to give our first impressions for Sensor. Then we're going to talk about the movie for a little bit. We're going to get into the spoilers. So if you haven't seen it, we are going to give things away. It's kind of hard not to talk about this film. And then we're going to wrap things up with our final thoughts, our score, a one to five, and our favorite scene. You're going to hang out for that. But let's take a look at the card and figure out what is this movie we're talking about. It is opening June 11th in theaters. It's out in theaters now. As a matter of fact, it was playing Christopher at the Alamo near you, right? It is, yeah. Um, and then it's going to be on demand June 18th. Uh, so we're catching the review right in between those two releases. Uh, that's directed by Prano Bailey Bond, written by her as well. Yes, her, him, yep. her. Yes, Anthony sir. Fletcher is also a co-writer. And the cast includes Naim uh, Algar, Michael Smiley, Sophia La Porsche, Adrian Schiller, uh, Guillaume De Luano, Loane, why do I do this myself and Nicholas Burns? Um, you know, one of these days I will actually take the time to learn how to pronounce the name before the show, but not anytime soon. All right, synopsis after viewing a strangely familiar video nasty term of the day, and Enid, uh, a film censor, sets out to solve a mystery, a past mystery of her sister's disappearance, embarking on a quest that dissolves the line between fiction and reality and colored lights yes so let's find out what our first impression of this may be and vanessa you are up first oh me um <clears throat> yes, I, don't mind, you. <laughs> I don't mind the colored lights i'll say that um there was a very strong homage to a movie that i'm sure christopher g moore picked up on uh, something called maybe uh, Evil Dead. <laughs> mm. No, I really enjoyed this movie. The Evil Dead references aside, um, the one thing that bothered me before I start talking about how much I loved it was the pacing felt off to me a bit. It felt a little long. It felt a little drawn out at times for um, a cinematic appeal, I guess, to show more of the colored lights for Dave, I think, is why they did it. But uh, story-wise and uh, the twist that they do, I found that very interesting. I really liked our lead actress. She played a bothered person so well. I felt so bad for her this entire movie. I just wanted to give her a hug and tell her it was going to be okay because <laughs> mm. she was stressed. Um but I, I liked it. I, I liked the way it was shot. I liked the special effects. I liked the time period that they were talking about. There were a lot of things I really enjoyed about it, but I really felt like the pacing was kind of off. And it, had we gone, it, what did it run? About an hour and a half? I think it could have gone like an, a solid hour and 15 and would have felt a lot better. Mm, yes, I, I, I hear you on that. All righty, Dave, sir. You are ah! next. 
<laughs> what was your first impression of Sensor? Um, I, I did. I did like this movie. Uh, I, I found it kind of, a, in some ways, a little bit of a mess. I, I, I didn't really know what it wanted to be. I mean, I was getting the Evil Dead vibe. There was also some uh, Jalo vibe in there. Uh, you know, it was a bit of a throwback. You know, going to the video nasty stuff. Uh, it was a. It was a. a, a character study in this in this lady kind of slowly losing her mind uh there was just a there was a lot going on and i just kind of felt at times it kind of lost its identity and what it wanted to be um but other than that i thought the girl that played enid is that her name yes mm -hmm. enid yeah i thought she was extraordinary I mean, she was really, really good. Uh, I, I, do we make fun of the colored lights thing? I really, truly don't understand that why that is meant to inflict horror upon us. Uh, the first, but at the beginning, that opening sequence, I thought they were actually used to to very good effect. I really enjoyed them there. But there, at about the two thirds point, when we go there again, super oversaturated, <laughs> and it just, I'm, I'm just like, oh, for the love of God, stop watching, <laughs> stop watching Time Colorado Space or whatever the fuck that movie is. Uh, you know. Uh, that scene, but again, that's kind of what it, it seemed to shift kind of gears there again. It's like it kind of went from a, you know, a, a straight horror movie trying to play to a, a Argento, Argento crowd a little bit. Uh, and it, I don't know, it just kind of seemed off. It kind of jarred me out of the moment at times. Uh, I did like the ending. Um, and there are some fantastic special effects in this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering how many, how many, uh, how many kids today will remember the whole video nasty things. I mean, that was quite the thing, you know, back in the old Fangoria days. Was. That was like a badge of honor to be said that it was on the video nasties list. That's like, yeah. <laughs> guess what we're going to go get? We're going to go find this one now at the video store. Um, oh. So uh, that that's kind of a dream job. You had a dream job for freaks like us. Right. Just to yeah. sit there and watch that stuff happen. But yeah, overall, I, I did I did enjoy it. It just seemed to lose its way on multiple occasions for me. Yeah, I, you know, I feel what you're saying. There's, I'll get to it when we start talking, but there are things that are mentioned and brought up that don't really pay off. Um, not that it, I, I don't think it takes away from the film, but it does have like these loose ends that fly around. But let's find out what Chris thought. Christopher G. Moore, what was your first impression of Censor? I loved all the colored lights in this. Um, <laughs> I know you did. Dave. Um, <laughs> you and your you you just want everything to be fluorescent. One, one, um, one day you'll have to explain it to me, Christopher. You have to just sit me down and lead me to the land of pink and purple. Um, I think you just it's creep me. show, Dave. It's creep show. Uh, it, it, well, yeah, but it makes sense in creep show because they're trying to get a comic book look. This is kind of oh, no, okay. anyway. We, okay. we don't you need to, we don't need that discussion now. In life, Dave. Um, <laughs> well, uh, that, that is true. <laughs> That is true. I can't argue no, that point. I'm just kidding. Is this when the pink and purple lights take off? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I I did love this, and I and I I mean I I did love that it's about video nasties, and there was parts of it like Vanessa mentioned that Evil Dead was very Evil Deadish, uh, which Evil Dead was on the the video nasty list, so that makes sense. Um, there's also a little bit of video drum in there as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, the, you mm -hmm. know, so there's a lot of different. Um, the cinematography is amazing, and I, and a part of that is definitely the colored lights. I love how they would use this sort of reddish light sometimes in the hallways, you know, just to to, to show the 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 mental instability of the character. And I, yeah, that the actress in this is a is just amazing, you know. Um, I think yeah, I I think it does kind of. I do agree that it, it's kind of lost in what it's trying to do. I actually, um, this is the feature uh, directorial debut of of the female director, and um, she actually made a film called Nasty, which was, I guess, sort of uh, uh, preceded this or sort of maybe gave form to this. I guess, um, but I did like I did like the idea of it, um, and I, I think I think for me it it didn't it didn't really feel like a twist because <laughs> I felt like something was wrong <laughs> with her to begin with. <laughs> um, but uh, overall, I, I, I really did enjoy it. And, and just because of the visual now, it, it did feel kind of slow. It didn't really feel like it was going to amp up at all. Um, but, but there was like some scenes where you just felt very awkward. You felt just as like, you know, and, uh, and I think just the awkwardness in general with how just being around this, this character, but I love the, the, the visuals I loved 
even the use of sound, how they would go from transition from one scene to another, either visually or through just the use of sound, what they call like an L cut where you, you take a sound and it goes into the next. I loved a lot of those elements. And I loved how it sort of like takes the film aspect of it and sort of like starts melding it to where you don't know what's, what's real and what's not. Um, so I loved a lot of that elements. I think it kind of goes off of the rails at the end where it, 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 it felt, uh, the ending feels a little bit Mandy. Um, but, but almost elongated to where it's like, okay, we get it. <laughs> we, we know where we are. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, we get the bit, let's move on or let's end it. Which I think if you, if you made it an hour 15, they wouldn't consider it a feature film. So I guess they had to pat it out. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I almost kind of was hoping there was like a bigger thing to it by the end of it. I, I, you know, I don't want to give too much away because I guess this is the, the initial uh, impression, but I did enjoy it. I mean, I, I mean, I, my, my eyes were eating up all the visuals. That's for sure. Mm, yes. yes. Um, it, whether it's just her, her visions and, and the use of the, the color lights out in the woods, which like the, you know, the cabin in the woods, uh, uh, or even just how they use lights. They would change the lights up even in her office space or just the, the, the TV that's in her home, all those elements and stuff, um, worked really well. And the production design too, with it being a period piece and stuff. You felt it. Yeah. Uh, you felt it. So you felt like we just, we were transported back to that time period, you know, where, where they had video stores. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I really loved it, but I think, I guess I wanted a little bit more out of it. And I, I, I think the ending doesn't, doesn't work as well for me. Cause I kind of felt that ending from the beginning. So it wasn't a big surprise, but it was interesting. I don't, I don't like, I, I hope everybody does it, watches this and doesn't think this is how filmmakers are in the horror field. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not some like, creepy guy in the woods with an eight millimeter. Like, that's not how you're on the set. That's not you. Screams okay. for me. I'm, I, I, I am, <laughs> I'm a good guy. <laughs> so, so anyway, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy, I enjoyed this quite a bit as well. It, it, I certainly didn't know exactly what we're getting into. And, I um, I will admit that at first I was wondering, you know, what it actually was. I was like, okay, I what's happening here? I, I I'm not really, you know, it's not really grabbing my attention. I think, um, you know, that it's it's interesting to you know for me the what she's doing because of the historic relevance of it. Uh, but at the same, but as far as a character and what was going on, I wasn't really into it at the beginning. I think I really wasn't into her until she got around her parents, and then, you know, she started getting exactly. really, she started getting really weird, and they, and you start she getting starts speaking it with her fingers and shit. You're like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm fucked up with this chick. Yeah, and you realize, <laughs> okay, there's more going on here than I'm than I'm catching at first. And uh, but I will say, by the end of it, it it is quite literally one of the most memorable films of the year. I, I'm I'm debating on whether it's going to be one of my favorite movies of the year, but it is definitely going to be one of the most memorable films of the year. I really really enjoyed the final act of this, and um, even up to the point that Chris was talking about, there's there's something that it that that scene, even though it does feel a little long, is trying to communicate and say that I was really really getting into and. Um, uh, I think the only thing, well, I'll have to save the only thing, you know, until we start talking about that scene, because if I say it, it'll give it away. But there, there's an element of that scene that they could have, you know, plucked a little bit more out of, and I would have enjoyed it even more. But it's, uh, it, once, once she starts, once she goes a, into the library of the, of the office, you know, the, and backlog catalog thing and, and picks out somebody's address. This movie just goes off the rails and it is so entirely fun after that. Um, I, I re recommend this, this, this is a winner for me. And um, I think it definitely horror fans, especially horror fans that lived through the eighties and, or, you know, studied it and know about video nasties, or maybe even are just curious about what that meant. I think you'll get a lot out of this, you know, they're, I would imagine, Dave, you got into this as well. Is when they're discussing about you know what scenes to trim and what scenes not to trim. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I was and I was wondering if they were too because they were ta- at one point they were talking about the movie Deranged. I'm like, are they talking about the actual movie Deranged? Because which, which one? Which oh, one? Yeah, because Tom was <laughs> in that era, and I was like, are they talking about? It? But they never really give enough information for you to decipher or if they're just. I'm sure because of rights issues and stuff, they were just you know using made up titles. Some random. Well, well, were the yeah. scenes they showed weren't weren't were some of those from real real films? Well, that's what I'm wondering. I don't know. I didn't research it enough to know. I mean, they very well could have been. And if they weren't, whoever recreated them did one hell of a job. Yeah. Because I feel like the one with the, when they showed the scene from The Needle, wasn't that from? Uh, the, that the that is from the, the movie. That's from Martin? Uh, Dead and Buried. Dead and Buried. Was that? From? That is from Dead and Buried. You're right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm yeah, that's sure right. It is. I'd forgotten that. Yeah, because I was like, I some of these, it's like, it, this has to be a real film because. Yeah, I mean, I, I, or I'll applaud them for making something that looks like <laughs> an older film, but I was like, this is, yeah, this looks like yeah, a real film. So, yeah, because what was interesting in that time was, you know, they weren't really cutting a lot out of movies. I mean, you look at the at the Friday the 13th films, you know, you look at four, part four and compare it to part seven or eight, and you're like, what happened? Where all, <laughs> why, why'd they cut all this stuff out? And they got so strict by the time. You know, those films came out that you couldn't even, you couldn't even barely show a person being folded in well, half. Well, it was, yeah, the, the <laughs> well, over here, yeah, especially the theatrical stuff, the amount of cuts they would cut out of stuff. And I think, I think that's what, that's was very helpful having the, the home video market. When that started, that allowed unrated versions of things, things you wouldn't normally get to see in the theater. You got to see the unrated cut, or you got to see the version that was never shown in theaters, yeah, or right. this film that was banned in seven countries. You know, <laughs> you got to see all those things that you know you normally wouldn't be able to see on the big screen. But and you know, because you know, you know, us growing up during like the the Tipper Gore era and all those things were yeah. like, you know, yeah. senators like we can't show, we can't allow you to have music with. F words. We can't allow you to have, you know, movies with people killing because people watch those and kids are impressionable and blah blah blah. It's like, well, Ed Gein wasn't watching <laughs> yeah. these horror films and he was, you know, making skin masks out of stuff. So I mean, come on. So yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I, I remember that time very, uh, very much. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I think that's, I think that was what I was kind of wondering. Yeah. And almost, that's why I felt like it was very videodromy because you have this sensor who's watching all these things that get cut out of films and i was kind of wondering if it was going this realm of like if she's so affected or she's going to see that that like the ring or see that one film that like you know supernatural or something and i think that i was kind of disappointed i was hoping that was where that was gonna go but i think it kind of did it kind of does not not in that visceral way but more in a more triggers longevity uh, trigger yeah. yeah 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 Um, but I do want to talk about the the big part of this uh, early in the film is when deranged uh, triggers uh, supposedly triggers one guy to do the same action and he doesn't even remember right he'd never and they and, and it seems like it's a very pivotal subplot but then I think they lose track of that and that's one of the things that bothered me and I just wanted to know if that if you guys caught that or did do you get a resolution to that? Because they basically they I mean, ended like they, he, they call him into the office, right? And, right, right. And he but wants well, to stuff, but they just kind of dropped it after. Well, no, yeah. but they mentioned it later that the, the that he didn't even watch the movie. Right, yeah, right, I think, right. Well, I think the the major tie-in is the am, amnesia part mm-hmm. because I feel her thing is amnesia because she doesn't remember what happened to her sister. She doesn't remember any of that stuff. So she's trying to piece together how could that happen? Mm-hmm. How could someone just not remember? something like that i think that's the only reason he was kind of that does make in sense. there yeah, yeah I, can, I can see that because that's what she's trying to do because she doesn't remember yeah when her sister was lost and well it, and, i think know. i think also kind of clicks i don't know if maybe i'm just reading too much into it but when uh <laughs> when the uh d- director gets his award-winning role <laughs> as a dead person um <laughs> oh yeah the producer, <laughs> the producer I, I, yeah, yeah. I love how she's like uh thanks for the drink <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what she goes. Yeah. I'll be going then. <laughs> I and so I, I was kind of wondering. I was like, is she, is she like, is she having amnesia about what just happened? You know. So I, it almost felt like maybe 
her mind was like yeah. well she had that way it. of like stealing herself she did it a couple times you know she like puts her shoulders back and yeah she, yeah and, uh, yeah it, it was a cool little tick that she gave that character. yeah the physicality yeah. i think really works well and just i mean she has that creepy stare <laughs> <laughs> Which we you'd see at the end, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> staring into yeah. your soul. Yeah, and and this film likes to scare you with loud screaming people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mom. That one, time, that one time, mom screamed about knocked me off my chair. I know. And then yeah. the and the director. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> why'd you do that? Uh, but it does have some very, very good gore, very uh, appropriate for this film. Dave, I, I have to imagine that some of the things that you know what I'm talking about in the, in the oh, cabin yeah. uh, had to be right up your alley. And yeah, you absolutely. And the very, very well done. Uh, mm. All of all the, all the gore effects were, were top notch. I, I have no idea who did, where did this film come from? Is, is, this isn't an, is it an American film? I, I, if I understand things correctly, it's UK, right? Yeah. I think it's British. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They did a, they did a good job. Mm -hmm. I really like to know too, if yes, those video clips Kingdom, they were using. Yeah. Or were actual video clips, or if they recreated some, or if they used some and recreated some, or what? Well, well, they... that the last scene in the cabin, the the murders that take place there, those look period too. So yeah. it even it would be totally believable if they recreated those scenes because they did such a great job yeah. with the tone of that. Well, mm -hmm. and, and I loved how they would also change the aspect ratio mm -hmm. for They're certain lot, scenes, yeah. and I, it makes me wonder, like if they actually used certain different cameras for certain scenes, cause you could almost see a graininess. Maybe they use a filter, but you'd see that graininess almost like they were using the same camera that mm -hmm. that weirdo director was using. Um, <laughs> what was his name? What was that guy's name? I can't remember. That North Gade, Nor North Frederick something or? North. Yeah. It's Frederick something. Yeah. Frederick, Frederick North. Yeah. Frederick yeah. North. Yeah. North. yeah. Uh, he I was like the character too. Yeah. And we, especially the way they introduced him in the shadows and he didn't really. I know he was very long or whatever. Right. Yeah. You're He's like, like a belt buckle. And he's going to have, he's going to have horns. Is he an alien? What's going on here? What's that? <laughs> uh, I'd like the uh, video shop as well when uh you know they bring the video nasty out in a brown paper bag and stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah when she yeah. goes up to that guy she goes i want to see the movies you have behind the counter yeah I know. <laughs> um that, that felt that took me back <laughs> every video star had that one guy that you could that you could get that video from man yeah it was always there or bootleg versions of bootleg versions for, yeah, some, for that for the mom yeah. and pop ones. There's yeah, always yeah. the have bootleg version of certain things. Definitely, definitely in the states because I don't think we had, you know, a video nasty section like like that, really, right? Um, Although you do, you would, you kind of, you, I, I guess you might find that at conventions now. But there's a certain art conventions that always have these bootleg versions of movies that you wouldn't be able to find anywhere else mm -hmm. yeah um selling them never, never figure out how they got away with that actually yeah they, well i don't they, 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 it's kind of i mean they're just, they're just doing it they're not they, yeah, yeah they're just yeah. doing it yeah they're just doing it they, they only got away because they never got caught um they uh, but at the same time i that's how i experienced evil dead for the first time was somebody brought a copy of a copy and we watched it and then I took that and made a copy of it and gave it back. <laughs> I work after resting now, Doc. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. Was, <laughs> I think the time lapse is. Done. But anyway, uh, but th that and uh, was it V from Russia? The Russian V from 1968. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it, yeah. So there were films and it was it was a thing, you know. You And of course, you'd go in there uh, uh, as to me as a kid. I don't think. Um, when I was first going, because it was it was interesting because there was a shop that opened at the end of the street, where my street ended up on like the main street, and that somebody opened up a shop right beside the gas station. Then I would I would go in there and and check it out, and there were always those ones that I want to take home and watch, but I know I can't, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I, not only would they probably not let me, but if they did let me, my parents wouldn't would want me to take it right back. But. Well, it, well, it, the stuff <laughs> the stuff still happens now, you know. It's like I remember one Christmas I had. People are talking about like, oh, you can jailbreak your your uh, your uh, was it your Amazon Prime thing your and Fire Stick, your Fire, Fire Stick, stick yeah. and watch all these movies and and I'm like, hello, they might want to like, hello, <laughs> I'm a filmmaker. Don't be telling me that stuff. You can make me mad. I think even my parents were like, they were. I think when they were living in Alabama, they had some person at a 
a haircut shop that had all these bootleg movies. They sold them. I was like, don't be buying bootleg movies by random people. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to make money as a filmmaker. I keep doing that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It, it, but yeah, it is kind of, I mean, there's still films that aren't, that, that were only available on VHS that have never been released. And so you, you can have to find bootleg versions of it. I mean, even, even films that Disney won't like South, song of the South. Yeah. You can only yeah. find versions like overseas. You can't you find it anywhere. It. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't I mean, I remember up. seeing, I saw it in the theater growing up. Mm. So it's, it's, it is kind of interesting how there's always been that. But yeah, I, I, I did like that aspect of it. It made me feel kind of like, Oh, I remember when I used to manage a video store. <laughs> um, or you'd watch those certain ones, versions of movies. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, this, they did a really spot on job with just the production design when it came to period and that, everything from telephones to clothing mm -hmm. to, lighting the fluorescent lighting they had up in there yeah all the, i mean with the and, and just how they shot certain things i mean I, I loved how like um they use the cinematography to show that she's almost like she's almost like that i don't want to say peeping tom she's always like peeking on uh, peeping in on things like when she's on the subway and she's looking through that sheet that, that the clear sheet at these people that are arguing almost like she's watching a movie. Mm -hmm. So everything she's doing, she's, they're always peeking. There's like another scene where you see her framed within a mirror. So the cinematography and the framing and stuff or the mise en scene, as they say, it was really spot on with this. And I think the director is really great with that. I think, yeah, it does. I think the main thing is just the story gets off and it's sort of a weird place to where it feels a little bit more stretched out than what it was and maybe needed a little bit more, meat packed into it to sort of make it filling other than just being stretched out. Cause I think by the end of it, again, when we get into like Rainbowville, as I call it, yeah, the rainbow was, uh, did, did you notice when they got out of the car, they were at the very area where the rainbow was landing. Yeah. Yeah. The and I love the visual that. effects with that. Yeah. It really worked really well, but I think again, I mean, things like that just felt like it was okay. We get it. <laughs> Well, do you, did you see it was the cover of the the video that she picked up? The first video she picked up in the video store was the that her parents. Oh, that's the right. That's rainbow. right. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make that connection. Day. Yeah, I didn't make that oh, connection. Wow. That's I cool. was watching it on my iPad, so I, I didn't I couldn't see the picture that well. So yeah. Oh wow! See, that makes me love. It. I mean, I love that kind of connective yeah. aspects of it. I think regardless of my issues with how the story played out, I think visually just how they, they connected everything by the end of it yeah. is kind of brilliant. It's, it's kind of a well-crafted visually. In that well, respect. even it's issues, it's flaws don't make it bad or don't, or don't seem so like, um, they're not egregious. Exactly. Exactly. It's the movie is still enjoyable. It's something I would watch again and I would talk to people about, for nothing else, the subject matter, you know, like we've been talking so long tonight about the video nasty. That was just a little bit before me, you know, by the time I went to the video store, the horror section was there in Blockbuster. So I could just go straight there and pick out what I wanted. It wasn't this hardcore kind of secret stuff. So it's very interesting to me, especially well, to hear y'all talk about it too. Well, yeah. And I think also, you know, yeah, they have some really great impactful effects, but there's other scenes where you don't see you only see her reaction to it, you know, like when she's in the theater or when she's watching the TV and you just hear the sound of what's happening mm -hmm. and you feel the impact on her eyes. You feel the impact on the expression on her face. <clears throat> you can feel it. And then when she, when yeah. she breaks down in that movie theater, you feel that. The and sound think, work is great because while you're watching yeah. her and you're hearing these things, the sound design is brilliant. Really and just also it. how they, the transitions, like there's one scene where, the camera you see like the tv the noise on the television the camera goes in the noise and then it goes like into like a uh like the or forest like in, it went into the static oh, and then some then beautiful the beautifully framed shots in this i think you know me i love some visual stuff and so i, I really love the attention to detail when it came to framing a lot of this stuff and and, and now that I've, i i kind of miss that I, vanessa it makes me appreciate it even more just knowing that little tidbit Mm -hmm. yeah, Thanks for go. noticing that. 
All right, well, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score, one to five, and our favorite scene. There are a lot to choose from. Uh, but before we do, if you're still uh, listening to us, we want to thank you for hanging out with us. We hope you're enjoying not only this review, but many others on the channel as well. Uh, if you want to help us out in any way, you can simply hit the subscribe button or share with a friend, and that would do wonders for us. And we'd love to hear your comments down below. And uh, hit the like button. Woohoo. All right, let's do this. Uh, I think uh, if I remember, Vanessa, you were going first, right? Sure. Uh, what is your final thoughts, your score and favorite scene? Um, yeah, well, I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed the conversation that we had about it tonight. I enjoyed the topic that it brings up, the conversations that it brings up, the, the film history that you get from um, kind of like a psychological horror film, bit of a psychological thriller mixed in with kind of a giallo kind of feel. And that's really interesting. Um, and the more I think about it, and as I was watching it too, you know, a lot, a lot of that um, stuff that I did see, Argento, giallo, it had that kind of pacing to it too. You know, some moments were stretched out a little bit um, longer than you would normally now. So it did really, they did a really good job with this. Um, like we said, the lead actress was phenomenal. She really sold this movie. Um, yeah. Uh, so, that, so giving it a score, though, is difficult because I want to score it high because I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but it still did have some things that made it feel a little bit uh, stilted to me. And, you know, you're we were talking about how this is the, the uh, director's debut, right? Mm -hmm. Feature debut. Yeah, and for that, it's so great. And to think like what they're gonna come up come up with after this is just gonna hopefully be better. Um, so I think I'm gonna give it a four. I think I'm gonna score it pretty high because I really, really enjoyed nice. it. I enjoyed the visuals. I enjoyed the special effects a lot, a lot. Um, and to that, it's very difficult for me to pick a favorite scene because mm. I'm torn. Uh, because there's one scene that I want to pick that I always pick in movies that we watch because it's my favorite. <laughs> but if no one else picks it, we'll come back around and I'll mention it'll be a special mention. But my favorite scene is is the the award winning death. Yes, <laughs> yes, phenomenal. It's the little the little guy with the axe pointing at him as blood splurting out of his mouth and he's gurgling. He, he gurgles. Uh, yeah, he's gurgling the whole time. And she's just staring at him. That I loved it. I thought it was great. And that's kind of like, it kicks off from there, right? Things start getting mm, real yes. crazy. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely recommend. Yeah, he, he was definitely a creeper. Yeah, he was. <laughs> All right, Dave, you're up next, sir. Your final thoughts, your score, and favorite scene. Well, I I actually came into our conversation already liking this movie, but uh, talking to you all about it, I think I like it a even a little bit more now. Mm. So um, my favorite scene was also the one that uh, Vanessa took, because it's the best damn scene in the movie. <laughs> so so uh, the one I'm going to give you is actually my second favorite, but uh, but still, and it's not a, a, a bloody horrible scene, but it's the, the scene uh, when she meets her parents at the restaurant mm -hmm. and just the uh, uncomfortableness. Oh. And we start seeing those little ticks <clears throat> and, you know, and we get that backstory. We, up to that point, we didn't know about the sister. We didn't right. know about, uh, you know, her PTSD or amnesia or whatever you want to call it. So it started to really shine a whole different light on the film. And I would say for me, that's really where the film started taking off was from that scene forward. Uh, and then it just got kind of crazier as we went. Uh, so I, I originally was going to say 3.75, but I'm going to, uh, agree with Vanessa and I'm also give it a four. Nice. Nice. I like that. I like that a lot. The next scene with the parents is even creepier. And then the last oh, one. Oh, yeah. Last that's one. <laughs> Christopher G. Moore, it's up to you, sir. What's your final thoughts your score and favorite scene? Yeah, I, I think, I think, um, this film is one of the more visually interesting films I've seen this year. Um, and I think um, whoever the cinematographer on this, you know, I, I really want to seek out other stuff if the cinematographer's done other stuff. But I think um, for a feature debut, I mean, I, I know that she's made very uh, several shorts before this, including um, Nasty, which is, I guess, Nasty. kind of fed into the creation of this. <laughs> um, but um, 
I, I think I think this is a, definitely a filmmaker I want to watch. I want to see what she creates next because she's definitely f- created a she's created a big impression on me just in her visual storytelling style. Um, j- just taking the sort of the story about watching these things on VHS and how she manipulates the aspect ratio during certain scenes and how she melds scenes together. Um, being able to work with an actress like the, the actress is in this and sort of have her sort of embody this interesting sort of mentally fragile character who's almost uh, on a level of, you know, mental instability and OCD ness. Um, and also just tying in also to the video nasty stuff, you know, how uh, living in a culture where we're trying to pick stuff apart. Um, but yeah, visually, the, the cinematography is off the hook in, in this film. And I, 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 I was like mesmerized just by every scene where you go to a different part of a building or we'd go out in the woods and, and the, the use of the lighting um, just works. I mean, works so beautifully um i I think it just it it kind of um uh, how it ends it's still interesting you know i I love the little glitches the little glitches between reality and non-reality oh yeah we didn't even Um, talk about that yeah because it's so good it was almost like you know it was almost like that little glitch in a vhs tape you know Mm -hmm. yes yes. or or even like uh if you guys remember like the scrambled channels (laughs) We'd have that yeah. moment, like, oh, it's a boob. Um, <laughs> um, I never did that. What are you talking about? No, never. I never. didn't either. <laughs> um, that's why I'm wearing glasses. Um, but, the, uh, but yeah, I, I, I really loved it. I love the storytelling in this, and I really want to see what she does next. Um, it, it definitely, uh, I'm taking notes for my next <laughs> film project. Nice. Because I really want to, I really want to recreate some of the visuals in this. Um, I, I'll give it a, I, I'll give it a 4.25. I'll get a little bit higher than you guys. You know, I'm, I'm always, you know me, I'm always about the visuals and I don't care about the color lights, Dave. Um, (laughs) The color lights lights are calling me home. Um, (laughs) Boop, boop, boop. (laughs) Just just make a film of nothing but pink and purple flashing lights. You'll be a millionaire. Well, uh, uh, until uh, people with seizure disorder uh, (laughs) put a warning label on it. Um, but um, uh, as for favorite scene, it's probably a, probably a weird scene, but I just love the visual aesthetics of it. And it's, it's when she's chasing after the actress and she stops on that rock. Yes. Um, and so her, and the, the, it goes into like her breakdown, but just, uh, just, just the, the, the light, edging of different colored lights around the trees uh and then then how sh- the color that's on her just everything where you take this sort of four setting and you almost make a it's almost like a like a like a painting where so, you know almost like one of those like uh, uh mondo uh pieces of artwork you buy you know where it uses different colored lights to reinterpret a scene just the way that's shot and frame and then her performance where she's like she just keeps saying like i really, really wants this to be real you mm-hmm. can see she has this breakdown where she doesn't want to mm-hmm. think that she's crazy she's like this has to be real it has to be real and um it's just a just a a really powerful unstable mentally unstable moment that's that's really uh portrayed in a really visually interesting way that kind of things like that blew me away and makes me want to do cool shit like that in my own stuff so do cool shit like that that's my favorite that. scene <laughs> absolutely yeah i it is a great scene it is absolutely a great scene. i um i i fell in love with this film as it went on um especially the more i caught up with it because it was it, it was always kind of ahead of me i'll admit uh, but when i caught up with it toward the end and and i think it's about the time I mean, I was getting into the action of it, but by the time that she was really falling apart, I think it's your scene there, Christopher, that, you know, it was really like, okay, okay, I'm ready. Let's do this. And I thought the ending paid off uh, well. There's going to be some people that don't like it, but I, I, if you do like it, you're going to love it. Um, 
I, I'm going to give this a four as well. I, it's it's right there. It, at this point, it's in the top 10. But we right. still got a very busy second half of 2021. Uh, it, it, can it hold on? I don't know. It, But it is going to be an honorable mention at the very least and one of the most memorable films of the year uh, for, the, you know, regardless. Um, and I definitely am looking forward to seeing where the, you know, where this director goes next. My favorite scene. Can I just take the entire cabin bloody scene, you know, from the first ax to the chest, to the decapitation and everything in between. Can I just take all that? Since you guys didn't mention, talking, anyway, do whatever you want. I'm going to take all that. Um, a third of the movie. Uh, well, no, really. no, no, it's all happens like in five minutes. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it was just like, it, she was living all the stuff that she's, you know, censoring. And I, you know, that's the point, right? That, that's what so the whole good. film's after. Right. But it was, you know, the, the whole thing with the hands going up, you know, you guys remember that, you know, was it, it's not Tom Savini, it's some other person, but the hands, Tasso. Tasso's yeah, hands. Tasso's hands, you know, <laughs> in the decapitation. It's like, wait, why does Mrs. Voorhees have hair on her knuckles? Um, <laughs> But anyway, it's, uh, you know, it just reminds me, and, that, and, that, and the little face in the chest. Just, oh, so good. Brilliant stuff. And then topped off by like, why'd you do that? He was my friend. Oh my God. And the guy um, throwing up in the back. <laughs> that was just great. When you when it pans out, and you're like, this is a film set. <laughs> that, that was the sound guy. The sound guy was like, <laughs> Yeah. He's holding the boomstick. <laughs> uh, that was great. All right, and it was, oh, yeah. It was, Decapitation um, was my other my other one. It was just done so well. And it's the guy, you, you know, like, well, couldn't happen to a better guy. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, yeah, so I'm going to go with that. This, it's, will I remember for those scenes or or the scene that leads up to the one Christopher is? It's like when she, you know, because the, the actress runs off and then she runs to catch up with her. But when she goes around that corner and they're in that little gully area, you know, the really wonderful location that they found or built. And and the lighting with her and the blood on her face. And she's, you know, another mm -hmm. scene I could have picked. And I think it's important to write, <laughs> uh, that, and I'll end on this because we're getting late. Uh, but when she arrives on the set and the, and the makeup uh, costuming girl doesn't, you know, doesn't realize who she is, or maybe she does. And that's part of it. Um, that it was all foretold or whatever. I don't know. I was I was wondering if there's like, is there super, supernatural? Well, they on? made they made like the makeup artist creepy. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Nobody on this film set was normal. They were all kind of yeah. creepy. Yeah. Like they're all serial killers. And you're like, I don't. I, <laughs> I was she like, was very like David Finchy, right? It's, it's like was, it right? did it did feel At like that <laughs> moment. Yeah. I feel like you know, a little person was gonna start dancing out of the the trailer <laughs> any when minute. she was looking out the window and then she ran out of the trailer <laughs> to get her. But oh, by the way, the, the, that. the music was really well done in this. There's oh, almost so like a, I feel like it was very maybe giallo-ish in, in parts, but the, the music really amped up the creepiness and atmosphere mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, it's a it's a well produced, well put together film and mm -hmm. worth, worth seeking out and catching. Um, that'd be interesting, you know. You, if you can if you can get it on VOD, I'd recommend doing. It. If you can see it at an Alamo or something, it would probably be really. I wish I could have seen it on the big screen. This yeah. this really does feel like like a really strong festival film. Yeah, you know, that you would love to see at a festival. Um, I'd love. Yeah, I kind of I kind of wish I'd seen it on the big screen. So, mm -hmm. yeah. but, just uh, see all that colored light. Oh uh, yeah, but I am glad I saw it. It's uh, it is quite a great film. All right, let's stop there or we just keep on going, just praising this movie. All right, uh, thank you all for joining me, Dave, Christopher and Vanessa. It, this was a wonderful film to talk about. Absolutely. It was a good discussion. More films with color lights. Yeah. <laughs> let's say goodnight. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.